Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. For a long time on this channel we have been taking deep dive looks at various classics from the meet em up genre that have seen release over the years. These videos have included River City Ransom, a cult favourite from the NES era that finally pairs beat em up action with RPG mechanics. The game has become considered a classic with strong appeal that always has players coming back for more. Fast forward to 2019 and after many instalments, most of which were released exclusively in Japan, a new entry in the series known as River City Girls would be released worldwide for modern hardware. In today's content we are going to take a deep dive look at this high quality game, analyse its story, place in history and look at the elements that resulted in this game becoming so special. River City Girls has descended from beat em up video game royalty. So the title is chock full of fan service and wonderful callbacks to the past while still successfully at the same time managing to walk its own path. While Streets of Rage 4 is considered by many to be the greatest modern beat em up, is this game even better? Anyway, without further ado, this ladies and gentlemen is the mad story of River City Girls. Yeah! To fully understand the significance of River City Girls, there is a lot of history to digest, much of which we have already covered in my River City Ransom video previously. River City Ransom, known as Street Gangs in Europe, is actually the third game in a series of titles that went under a completely different name in Japan, Kunio-kun. The first game in the Kunio series, known as Niketsu Koha Kunio-kun, released in 1986, and sees a high school delinquent named Kunio stand up against a series of rival gangs who are frequently targeting his classmate Hiroshi. The game was de-Japanified and released as Renegade in the West and would establish several of the beat em up tropes that we now all know and love. The genius behind this game at Technos Japan known as Yoshihisa Kishimoto would pretty much single handedly invent the entire beat em up genre. As everything in beat em ups that was not established in Kunio-kun in 1986 would certainly be established in his next game, Double Dragon in 1987, including beloved cooperative play. The Kunio-kun universe would be expanded in 1987 with Niketsu Koko Dodgeball Boo, a title released as Super Dodgeball in the West, a dodgeball themed game featuring Kunio and company. In fact, over the years, these characters would feature in plenty more sports games too, but that's a subject for another time. As for the third game released in 1989, Downtown Niketsu Story, as mentioned, would become River City Ransom. And like all other games from the series, would undergo great changes in its storyline and graphical presentation during its localization, in order to make the game more palatable to the Western market. After the release of this beloved game, over the years there would be countless more Kunio-kun titles released, many of which were more sports games, remakes and compilations of previous games. Still though, there were multiple brand new beat em up RPGs released as well, many of which remained exclusive to Japan. Depending on interest Garner today, we may look at some of these in detail in the future. As mentioned in my Double Dragon videos many times before, the IP holders of both Kunio-kun and Double Dragon, known as Technos Japan, would declare bankruptcy in the mid-90s, with Japanese company Arc System Works now holding the licenses for both franchises. In terms of the game we are looking at today, River City Girls, it was a collaborative effort between Arc System Works and American company Way Forward. The same Way Forward who would have been behind the fantastic Shantai series, and one of my personal favourites, Double Dragon Neon, a game Technos had previously outsourced to them. So Arc Systems must have been happy enough with how they handled the Double Dragon IP to hand them development duties again to create a new River City game. River City Girls turns the River City Ransom narrative on its head by featuring a pair of high school girls known as Misako and Kayako, who must fight their way around the city through enemies and obstacles in order to rescue their boyfriends Kunio and Ricky previous stars of the games. While for western gamers, planners of these girls may be new, believe it or not, this is not the first game in the series where these two are playable. As prior to this game, they starred in Kunio Tachi no Banka, a 1994 Super Famicom game. In this one, Kunio and Ricky are convicted of a hit and run, and the pair are imprisoned in a juvenile correction facility, however the two claim to be innocent. 
It later transpires that the pair have been framed, so escape from the prison to prove their innocence. In this game, both Masako and Kaiko are featured as playable characters, with the duo being able to move faster than the boys. So River City Girls sees this pairing's welcomed return. In terms of the game's development, the title was directed by Adam Tierney and Bannon Rudis, with the goal to take the franchise in an exciting new direction. The goal was to make a game full of characters with unique moves that would accentuate their large personalities. Rudis wanted the combat in the game to be as strong as fighting mechanics found in Arc System Works fighting games, while at the same time minimising the play controls and inputs to make the game have more in common with beat em ups of old. A tall task to say the least, but taking into account how satisfying the game feels to play, we cannot claim he did a bad job. Internals at Way Forward would introduce Tierney to the old Kunio Tachi no Banka game, with him instantly falling in love with both Kaiko and Misako, the two playable female characters in the title. This would lead to him making the decision to make them two his stars. Pair all this with Mega McDuffie composing the tracks for the stages, cinematics, menus and nearly everything else, and from the start the use of pixel art to connect it to previous games in the Kunio Toon franchise, then all the ingredients were coming together to create something truly special. Now, as already mentioned, the girls are on a quest to rescue their boyfriends, who they suspect have been kidnapped. The game starts out with some great animations depicting a scene with the girls receiving a message on their phone depicting what looks like the boys being taken. This all occurs while the girls are in high school detention, with them breaking out and rampaging across the school, attacking any suspicious people that they come into contact with. Now for gamers unfamiliar with River City or Kunio Kun games in general, the game follows roughly the same gameplay formula as many others from the series. While many beat em ups simply feature side scrolling stages, River City Girls features a completely different approach, with the game instead being split into six areas that need to be played through, with each of these six areas essentially being made up of interconnecting tiny stage areas that gamers can go back and forth between. Basically, think of this as like the beat em up equivalent of traversing a Metroidvania map. While this may sound fairly complicated, it is more simple and intuitive than it looks on the surface as gamers progress through these six areas in a fairly linear fashion with story dialogue and icons being placed on the map whenever any backtracking may be necessary. It is all very fun and very easy to follow. Sometimes to be able to leave certain areas players must clear certain objectives and win certain battles. In fact throughout chain and locks will surround the edges of the screen indicating that players must defeat a few waves of enemies before they are allowed to progress anywhere further. It is also worth noting that when first starting out in the high school combat is simple and bare bones with both of the girls being able to perform simple attacks and perform blocks against oncoming moves. However the amount of varied attacks that can be performed can be increased which we shall soon get to. Something else that gamers will quickly notice is that defeating enemies causes them to drop money and experience points. So like in previous Kunio games, the girls can regularly level up to improve their stats as well as use the money to purchase items from the in-game stores. At the end of each of the six stage areas, there are stage bosses, each of which offer a lot of variety for a game from the beat-em up genre, which often really mixes up the gameplay. These fights all offer animation cutscenes and really help to push the narrative along, which I must add is a lot more interesting and quirky than what we would usually find from a beat em up. The character dialogue is strong throughout, with the game and characters offering enough charm and humour to have you constantly giggling, with the title often showing self awareness with regards to how ridiculous the concept of a beat em up actually is. With the girls even having a conversation with each other, questioning why everyone in their town is so violent and why they cannot walk a few feet without having to fight someone. Speaking of character dialogue, when encountering Miss Suzu, the first boss, she wants to stop the pair being able to leave the high school and acts as a great introduction to the players with regards to how future bosses operate. For those who know their video game history, she is a familiar foe, previously appearing as a tough boss fight in the Ketsu Koha Kunio Kun. Gamers will quickly note that her life bar is split into three parts and will also notice that as damage is dealt her attack patterns change as her meter depletes into each of these three parts. This is standard for all bosses in the game with them getting fiercer as they slowly are backed into a corner by gamers. Conquering Masuzu's attack pattern will result in her spilling more information to the girls and finally allowing them to leave the school. 
which allows action to spill out onto the streets in true beat em up fashion. In this portion of the game, players finally have the opportunity to spend some of that hard earned cash in typical River City fashion, with the pair being able to splash out on various holdable food items that replenish health, or even head to the dojo to buy new moves. With regards to the dojo, there are two placed in the game, the two of which are run by none other than the beloved Bimmy and Jimmy themselves, which I must say was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. The girl's mobile phone acts as a great interface to function as the game's menu system, where the game's map can be accessed to see your location, as well for example to see how to perform the long list of moves that Bimmy and his brother have taught you at the dojo. The moves can obviously be executed against the various enemies that appear in this game. Enemies, I must add, come in 11 different types, each with multiple coloured variations, offering different strength levels. An interesting additional feature of the game is that when the last enemy in an area is beaten to the point that they are stunned, players have the opportunity to spare them and recruit them to use for additional assist attacks. The game's menu keeps track of which characters you have spared, so gamers can set out in order to spare one of each enemy variant if they wish to do so. Around town, players also regularly encounter a character known as Godai, who on multiple occasions pops out of dustbins like the Grouch from Sesame Street. Godai is a strange little man with knowledge of what's happening in River City. He follows Kayoko and Misako around the city and provides them with various quests in each area, which completing rewards them with experience points and additional items, further building on the experiences the game offers. Also in the shopping area, the girls encounter Hiroshi, the very lad from the first ever Kunio game, who was attacked by the gangs who Kunio was looking to avenge. In this game, he is back and helps Kayoko and Misako in Cross Town to get inside its mall. Once the girls have fought their way through the mall, they eventually do battle with another boss on the building's roof. This time, they take on Kunio's childhood friend, Yamada, who has become a practitioner of the dark arts after a heartbreaking incident. These dark arts appear to grant him telekinetic powers. Yamada was the final boss of downtown Niketsu Monogatari, the game obviously known as River City Ransom itself in the West. The character would reportedly be revised as a cold-blooded evil mastermind with dark powers in River City Rival Showdown, but in River City Girls, his appearance is far more light-hearted, like much of the game and its humour in general. The third act of the game sees our duo brawl their way around the wealthy part of the town, quickly coming up with leads that a fashion designer known as Hibari may know their boyfriend's whereabouts. But after some digging around, they realise that they would need to visit with an offering as a form of payment to get to her. The greatest thing about this whole portion of the game is that when you finally reach the bottom of a department building to get to a mysterious shop to buy the gold cat, you quickly find that the shop is ran by none other than perhaps my all-time favourite beat-em-up video game character, Skull Skullmageddon, with his original voice from Double Dragon Neon making a return too. While it was amazing to see this awesome specimen, I just wish his role could have been even bigger. But it was cool to see him here nonetheless. Who doesn't love Skullmageddon? Hibari offers a very different boss battle to those featured previously, so requires a very different strategy from players to defeat. Her bullet hell attacks and ability to summon minions certainly makes her one of the game's more challenging opponents, but if you can successfully ground her, victory can be won. Players next progress into the slums of the city, where as you would expect, a lot of miscreants lay in wait. The coolest part about this section of the game is certainly the boss battle, as it takes place against one of Double Dragon's most well-known deplorables, a Bobo Bobo Bo. Now a Bobo appearing in Kunio Kun games is nothing new, as he has made cameos in multiple other Kunio games over the years. In this one, the massive brute brags about kidnapping people for money, leads into the girls to suspect he is behind Kunio and Ricky's disappearance. A Bobo in the game can use his raw strength in order to make debris fall, which he can use as weapons against the girls. In the same vein though, both Kayako and Masako can use this material against him. Speaking of cameos from other games, they do not simply end with a Bobo, Skullmageddon and Bimmy and Jimmy. In terms of Double Dragon characters, Marion has her own store, and good old ropey Linda is back using her whip as an enemy sprite. In fact, it's not just Kunio and Double Dragon games that River City Girls has callbacks to, but also Combat Tribes, a further beat em up created by the legendary Yoshihisa Kishimoto himself. Characters from this game include Belova, 
who has a store in Crosstown, and Martha Splatterhead, who runs Lucky Pen in Ocean Heights. In fact, Trash is even in this game, the third stage boss of Combat Tribes, who is now appearing as a reappearing enemy who attacks by spinning his hammer or striking down with it. In the game, the girls soon suspect that the boy's disappearance may be in relation to a musician performing a concert in their town, which leads them to Ocean Heights. This leads to another cameo with Double Dragon's Burn Off acting as security, preventing them from entering. After completing the story quest, acquiring tickets, hilariously Burn Off dissolves in exactly the same way as he is when he is defeated in the Double Dragon games. The battle against the musician Noise is once again an extremely novel and quirky one, with the boss fight appearing to take a ton of inspiration from Guitar Hero of all things. I bet no one was expecting this reference to be included. Defeating Noise eventually leads players to the final section of the game that sees the girls ascending up a Yakuza tower to take on who they suspect to be Sabu, the Yakuza leader from previous games who surely must have kidnapped their boyfriends. After running a gauntlet against typically tougher opponents in very classic style beat em up last stage action, the girls let off a few explosives and they finally find themselves at the top of the tower where they encounter the Yakuza leader. It transpires though that Sabu is now in prison and instead his daughter known as Sabu Ko is now running the show but claims to know absolutely nothing with regards to Kunio and Ricky's whereabouts. This does not stop her wanting to punish the girls though for storming her building and challenging her in the first place. Sabuko functions as this game's final boss with arguably the most varied and challenging attacks as of yet. In fact, when you deplete the three chunks of her life bar, she gains an extra fourth one with her attacks becoming even more ferocious in the process. Sabuko is a martial artist who fights using the katana and elemental key attacks using various stances. Finally, defeating her brings an end to the playthrough, but what for Ricky and Kunio? After beating Sabuko, Kaiko and Misako crash through a window and plummet through the roof of a spa below. Here finally they find Ricky and Kunio, who have simply been relaxing in a sauna the whole time. The boys are surprised and flustered that the girls have dropped in, shielding their modesty in the process. While the boys hide their meat sausages, the girls proclaim how worried they were about them, with Kunio not responding in the way the audience may have expected, and simply complains it's those crazy girls again, and does not even remember their names. Ricky thinks it's probably a good idea for two leave, and look for Hasabe and Mami, the girls they are actually interested in. In rage after this, the girls simply punch them to the moon and the game comes to an end, providing many players with arguably an underwhelming finish. On the bright side, at least, this unlocks Ricky and Kunio, so gamers have the opportunity to play the game again, this time as the lads if they are up for it. It turns out though there was an explanation behind this game's bizarre ending, which I will try my best to explain. As mentioned earlier in the video, the Kunio-kun series was bastardised through localizations in the West, with the story and characters being changed left, right and centre. As discussed, many games would never make it to our shores, including Kunio Tachi no Banka, the only beat-em-up to previously feature the two girls in this one as protagonists. In fact, throughout the series as a whole, Masako and Kayako's appearances are limited in comparison to Mami and Hasabe. The girls who feature as the boys' friends, love interests or damsels in distress throughout much of the series. Speaking of these girls, throughout the River City Girls' adventure, they bump into these mean girls regularly, with them constantly mocking our pair of heroines who are insistent that Ricky and Kunio have no interest in them. If players are able to defeat Sabuko at the end of the game to gain half of the charm, the other half can be gained by smashing all 25 Sabu statues. Gaining both halves of a charm unlocks one final secret boss fight against Mami and Hasabe. Hilariously, like in many moments throughout the game, plenty of fourth wall breaking is afoot, with even after their defeat, the pair of mean girls insisting that Masako and Koyako are nobodies who have only ever been in one 16-bit game, and that was not even released in the USA. So no wonder the boys would not be able to remember who they are. Talk about obscure! The true ending sees the girls once again crash for sauna, but this time being invited to join the lads for a Merv Burger, bringing the game to a happy conclusion for our young ladies. 
Throughout a playthrough of River City Girls, gamers will be charmed by this title's amusing story that is packed to the brim with satire, in-jokes and easter eggs galore for fans of a series to enjoy both old and new. Something I have yet to mention is that for a beat-em-up, this title is insanely long and takes about 6 hours to play through, which is an incredible length considering most arcade beat-em-ups only lasted like half an hour. River City Girls, on the other hand, through its story, graphics, gameplay and presentation, is extremely finely paced. So while on the rather long side for a game from this genre, you never feel tired or exasperated with the experience. As the music and gameplay is both equally chilled and action oriented enough to constantly keep you hungry for more. In fact, I am pretty sure this is now going to be one of those games I keep going back to, to play over and over again. It is just that bloody good, in my opinion. I would not be the only one who loved this game either. Nintendo Life would conclude, not since Scott Pilgrim vs The World was released 9 years ago have we played such an entertaining, satisfying beat-em-up. Whether you're playing alone or teaming up with a friend in co-op mode, River City Girls is a visually superb, orally fantastic, out and out love letter to the genre. Fans of River City Ransom and other Kunio Kun games will adore how it respects the past but makes it relevant today, while those new to the series will simply find a hugely enjoyable and infectiously cheerful scrapper. Atomics would heap further praise stating River City Girls manages to bring the genre to the current generation and represents a great evolution for the Kunio Kun series, offering highly entertaining gameplay, high level visuals and sound presentation. I just can't wait for more adventures from these two girls. Speaking of more adventures from these two girls, the journalist in question seems to be getting their wish, because as of E3 this year, it was announced that not only is a River City Girls 2 currently in development, but an English translated version of Kunio Tachi no Banker under the new title of River City Girls Zero is also coming to modern hardware. Wow. The era of the River City Girls has officially arrived, making a fantastic contribution to the amazing beat-em-up renaissance period we are going through at present, with great game after great game seeing release. Many consider Streets of Rage 4 the greatest of the modern era, but there is no doubt whatsoever in my mind that River City Girls doesn't give it a run for its money. Keeping all this in mind, it's a matter of personal taste which one you prefer, but all I can say is you need to experience both of these gems. I am desperate to play River City Girls 2. I need that next fix of new Kunio Kun action. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the mad story of River City Girls. Let me know down in the comment section what you thought of this video. And if I were to do more videos on Kunio Kun, which game from this sprawling franchise would you like me to cover next? I would be extremely keen to hear your thoughts. Finally, if you want more girl content, why not check out my wife, Lady Decades channel, who I believe tonight is uploading a video covering the Sega Pluto, a bizarre cancelled system from Sega, so go give her a subscribe now. If you want more beat'em up goodness though, there is plenty more of that here to enjoy, so why not click on my beat'em up playlist for 70 plus videos covering these wonderful games. Finally, all of this is possible in part due to my generous Patreon backers who allow me to work on nonsense like I uploaded today full time. So huge thank yous and shout outs go out to Sebastian Velez, A Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heo Paulo Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey I. Marcinia, Capcom vs SNK, BXL Gotham, Ron Dinch, Evan Border, Philip Mamp, Azuraka, Keith Ferguson, Dropkin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ego, Jordan Duran, Angel Light 85, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Prince Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of a Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Kid Anime, Justin Wang, Al McNamara, Hermes Gonzalez, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley Sanghi, Felatio, Langston Miller, Noob, Brian Barry, Sarah Powell, Lamick Renee, Marvin Araliga, Chris Call, TOG Driver, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Richard Stu Stewart, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Retroverse.com, Casey Wright, Sin Space Zai, Andrew Bazansky, Alex Summers, Gunther Hendricks, and everybody else who backs me on Patreon. Yeah. Cheerio.